is the Honorable Minister of Health. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. I rise in this House uh, to speak in support of the speech of the throne, and I'd like to take this opportunity to tell you a little about the, about the constituency I represent, my personal journey, and why I'm so proud to be a part of this government caucus, and how our policies are going to help those who elected me. I'd like to begin by recognizing the visitors that I had introduced earlier and their stamina in uh, still being here at this point to hear this speech. It means a great deal to me, so thank you. Um, they certainly have played an important role in inspiring me to enter partisan politics and supporting me uh, personally when I decided to do so, whether it be through uh, contributions, uh, door knocking, uh, helping put up uh, hundreds of signs, um, all of the above. Um, and of course, those are Ray Martin, Raj Panu, Alex McEachran, and Reg Baskin. Uh, all of these men are uh, my godfathers in the NDP. Uh, as well as many others that I will mention down the road. Uh, I also had asked uh, Star Curry to be here. Uh, Star is uh, the president of our Women's Caucus and has made it her uh, uh, primary volunteer uh, duty to make sure that we get women to run for the NDP and has uh, had that task uh, as a key charge of hers uh, since the early 1980s. So certainly uh, really appreciate her support of myself and other women candidates in our party and making that a priority going forward. I also want to express my heartfelt gratitude to the people of Edmonton Glenora who elected me this May. Edmonton Glenora is a dynamic and diverse constituency which includes the neighborhoods of Westmount, Inglewood, my home riding, our uh, home neighborhood, Prince Charles, Sherbrooke, Dovercourt, Woodcroft, North Glenora, Glenora, Grosvenor, McQueen, High Park, Kenora, Britannia Youngstown, and Mayfield. We are home to people who rent and who own those who are Indigenous and multi-generational Canadians, as well as many newcomers who have recently are arrived as uh, part of the Syrian Refugee Initiative. We are employers and employees, students and teachers, pregnant and parenting teen moms who live in the Brentwood homes who are supported by the Terra Centre, seniors who live in lodges like the McQueen Place operated by the Greater Edmonton Foundation, working families who are proud to send their children to well-supported schools, we also have three business revitalization zones, 124th Street, Inglewood, and Stony Plain Road. As individuals who are concerned about how low the price of oil is impacting our economy, their livelihoods, and the livelihoods of each other. We also have many dynamic businesses, cultural and service centers, including the TELUS World of Science, small businesses like the Remedy Cafe, Bloom Studio, and Duchess Bake Shop, big businesses like Safeway and Home Depot, the Woodcroft Public Library, Jasper Place Health and Wellness, Government House, Woodcroft Public Health Centre, the Peter Hemingway Fitness uh, and Leisure Centre, the uh, amazing Art Gallery District along 124th Street, and many top-notch schools that work to help children reach their full potential each and every day. I was overcome with gratitude by the support that Edmonton Glenora showed me in May, and I am devoted to serving them to the absolute best of my ability. They told us in May that love is better than fear and that a welcoming and inclusive world is one that they want to continue to build. They told us to support jobs, support families, to be a government that operates with the public and the citizens of Alberta always at the top of mind. I'm proud of my Alberta roots, growing up in the rural communities of Alterio, Castor, and Canuso. My parents were faithful public servants, a teacher and a principal, they instilled a sense of service, a love of learning, and a pride of public education. And you won't be surprised to hear that my father did not encourage me to follow his career pathway. As a principal during the deep cuts of the Klein era, my dad had to make tough decisions that resulted in staff members being laid off, class sizes increasing, less one-on-one -on -one support for students who were falling behind, and even went so far to take every other light bulb out of our school. So when I asked my dad for career advice, he discouraged me from mentoring teaching because both he and my mom felt incredibly disrespected by that government of the day. And re their reward for making very tough decisions, as I just mentioned, was a 5% pay cut to both of them. He told me that if we lived in another province, he might suggest teaching, but that Alberta needed macro change before it would be a profession that he would want his daughter to work in. And it may not surprise the honourable members in this assembly that I'm stubborn, however, and that I did follow my own heart and uh, chose to, to pursue education and a teaching career. 
and I'm so proud that I chose to do so, having an undergraduate and a graduate degree both from uh, the University of Alberta. And while I was completing my MED, I had the pleasure of getting to know the Honourable Raj Panu. My parents had always told me to work hard and ask people that I respect for advice, so I did just that. And as I mentioned earlier, Dr. Panu recommended that I get involved in politics as soon as possible. I took that as an endorsement for uh, applying on a job <laughs> and a reference. So I had heeded his advice and I applied for a researcher position at the NDP caucus. And Mr. Speaker, this was the beginning of my beginning. I had the honour of working for Raj Panu, Ray Martin, the current education minister and our government house leader, as well as our premier. And every one of them has made a significant contribution to the people of Alberta through their public service and has supported me personally along my political path, and I am forever grateful. I am in awe of the opportunity that the constituents of Edmonton Glenora have provided by allowing me to participate in this assembly as their representative in creating macro change that my parents spoke of Alberta needing. And today I'm a part of a team that is committed to making tomorrow better than yesterday. We know that it is not an easy goal in a province that is very dependent on one industry. And we are so fortunate to have a strong oil and gas base. But with a price volatility in today's low oil prices, it has never been more important to diversify our economy and to stabilize our public sector so that families can count on the public health care system that we are so proud of as Albertans to be there when we need it. To count on our schools, to fund growth, to ensure that children get the very best start in life, to ensure that everyone here pays their fair share to support our province, our home, as we weather this economic downturn. And Albertans are resilient, determined, and we have each other's backs. And I have no illusions about how tough things are right now in Alberta. And Alberta families know the challenges that lie ahead for themselves and for our government. But while the choices government makes might be easy in the boom times, the choices government makes when Albertans are hurting are even more important. While government strives to diversify and strengthen our economy to ensure that the future Albertans have, um, it, that we are less vulnerable to drops in the price of oil, while our government invests in job creation and protecting Albertans from uh, exploitative, exploitative uh, payday lenders, while our government invests in cleaner, stronger energy futures, while our government improves public oversight and stewardship of services and encourages democratic renewal, there is one message that needs to be delivered to Albertans today. Know that I am here to work for you, that our government is here to work for you. I will be working for you because I will be working for my friends, friends in Canuso who are working hard on the farm, friends that I worked with at the university and continue to serve their students and are so relieved that we haven't seen drastic cuts in a volatile uh, budget cycle like they've lived through so many times before. My friends on the school board, like Ray Martin, who is here today, who have uh, many times um, heard commitments to stable, predictable funding, but we haven't realized them yet. Well, not until last May, Mr. Spe Madam Speaker. Last May, the people of Alberta spoke loudly. They had a choice. They had a choice between reliving the life that we lived two decades ago, the one that caused my family so much anxiety and so many other families in Alberta so much anxiety. The reality that uh, we've continued to allow for deferred maintenance to increase throughout the province. We hear that from both sides of the house, how de devastating it is that we've got buildings that aren't in the best condition, that our children deserve better, that our hospitals deserve better, and it's true. And the only way to get through this is to continue to invest in each other and support each other. So I'll be working for the kids, working for the teachers that, learn, that they learn from every day, working for the nurses and doctors their moms and dads depend on to keep their families healthy. And I'll be working for my mom, who first taught me what a privilege and responsibility is to serve the public, a lesson I take to heart every day in this province. And for my dad's memory, who I think would be very proud of me today. So I want to say thank you, Madam Speaker, for allowing me to share my story today. And so much gratitude to the people of Edmonton, Glenora, for allowing me the honour to serve as their MLA. Thank you.